Um, my name is Linda Schmander. I work for the Film Group Youth, the National Board for Youth Affairs. Um, welcome to this afternoon session where we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the issue of youth unemployment and what we can learn from all the good work being carried out around the world. Uh, the theme of youth, uh, Susan, that's going to be speak a bit later, is going to uh, tell you a bit more about us. Uh, we are the organizers here tonight, together with SPIR, which is a structural support, support, support structure within the European Social Fund in Sweden. Uh, and I'm giving the mic already to Jacob to give you a bit more presentation about the game. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you, Linus. I will not speak very much. I will more try to be a time manager because we have so many interesting stories here this afternoon to hear about. And uh, we will, I hope, also have a, a, a vital discussion. And uh, here is uh, Sigrid uh, Melchior, who is a Swedish journalist uh, working for the Swedish daily Göteborg Posten. You always read Göteborg Posten, I guess. So you know about that. So we'll have some more dynamics into the debate and follow-up questions. I leave the floor here to uh, Susanne Sander from uh, Team Group Youth. Thank you. So, uh, I have the, the very attractive uh, title to my presentation, Defining the Problem. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or if I am going to uh, define more problems, uh, but uh, hopefully you will be following me on this journey that we made in Sweden during these uh, years of this program period. Team Group Youth was put together to gather, analyze and disseminate knowledge uh, gathered uh, or produced in all of the youth projects financed with social fund in Sweden during this program period. And it's knowledge about the, the target groups of the projects, knowledge about the methods used in the projects to work with young people uh, outside of the labor market. And uh, they also have an assignment to identify structural hinders uh, for working with young people outside of the labor market. We do this, um, and our uh, empirical work is carried out in, uh, in a dialogue with all of the projects run in Sweden during this program period. The project's objectives are to facilitate young people's transition to work, as well as preventing exclusion. The target group is young people in transition between studies and working life. Uh, and at this moment, uh, approximately 300 projects and 25,000 young participants nationwide uh, are participating in this uh, ASF project in Sweden. We gather our knowledge through uh, surveys, study visits and interviews with all of these projects. When working um, as a team group, uh, and with our objective to maximize the learning from what takes place during this program period. One key reason for this is, of course, uh, the high young youth unemployment in Sweden, which is 25% of the labor force, young people in the labor force are unemployed. Of course, it's relatively high, it's above the average, and it's low compared to some countries within the EU, but it's uh, quite high for being a country which has not really suffered so much from this recession and it has been high for quite a long time. Uh, right from the start uh, it was obvious that the projects had problems to uh, uh, reach their target groups, the young people in transition. It was also obvious uh, that the target group were ill-defined and there was uncertainties about the size of the target group. As a consequence Team group youth uh, with all its actors. Here you can see <laughs> the actors in team group youth, uh, which is uh, five national uh, agencies, uh, the organization uh, for the local authorities and regions, and uh, an NGO called Comunicare. And we all work together in the team group. 
uh, together as actors, uh, we put forward a model to analyze young people not in employment or education. Um, this model is of course, does of course include the so-called need group, young people not in education, employment and uh, training as a subcategory. I will not go really into detail in this model, but one important part is that it only includes young persons that has not been in employment or studying for a consecutive year. It is based on registered data and to categorize the selected population, we cluster them in categories describing what form of, if any, support they get from public sector. In doing this register analysis, we concluded that 120,000 young people in Sweden are not in employment and education during a whole year. This is the, uh, the data from 2010 you see here. And of, of these, if we look in what kind of clusters we could do, we can see that 22% uh, have support from uh, the national labor market measure, that is the public employment services. 7% has uh, support from local authorities, the municipalities. 11% uh, have illness or disability benefits. 70% uh, has a combination of 0.1 to 4. 7% uh, has immigrated during the last year. Uh, and as much as 31% has no, no, no activity, and you could say that these are really the needs in Sweden. They are not in employment, education or training, as we know. Of course, also individuals that have uh, disability benefits can be outside of training, uh, as goes for those uh, on parental leave, for instance. But mainly, the category number six is the one that gives us the most concern. We can also see that this group has been quite uh, significant and uh, stable during a long period of time. They have checked on several um, years and we can see that since so uh, 1997, when it was 11.4% of the population in the age group of 16 to 25, uh, it's now 9.5. During 2010, it was 9.5% of the population. Uh, during better years, like 2007, it sank to 7.3, but it's still quite consistent over time, which gave us uh, quite a bit of concern. We can also see that those that are not in education or employment, uh, the 60% of them are also outside of education and employment the year after. This is a follow-up from 2009 to 2010. And you can see 40% go uh, to employment and education, which is of course very good, but still 60% or 58% stay outside. Um, and uh, it's worrisome. We can especially see that it's the youngers that uh, are stay outside of the education and training. Uh, the youngers being here 16 to 19 years. Um, we uh, gather information uh, from the project, uh, and in the project survey, we asked about what kind of hinders the participants <coughs> carry for their fu uh, future transition to the education and labor market. Uh, and we got, got quite uh, a lot of examples, and uh, the key um, factors were that they had multiple problematics. It was not only uh, not finishing a secondary education or even uh, a primary education. It was usually a cluster of different hinders for their transition. Uh, and that means that uh, resources must be pooled to support these young people, indivi young individuals 
transition to the labor market. And this is what takes place within the social fund projects in Sweden, where cooperation between different actors are prioritized. We have made two reports looking into the benefits of cooperation. And we see that not cooperating costs a lot of money. Not doing anything will cost 70,000 euro per person per year. This means that these people, they consume a lot of uh, public uh, support uh, from different actors without it being coordinated. So uh, if nothing else is done, they will still cost uh, the society 70,000 euro per year per person. This means, let's see, what was that? The great majority of youth projects are cooperations between local, regional and national actors in social, educational, labor market, health and other sectors. This means combined support instead of a parallel and uncoordinated support. A young person that do not get a combined support will cost a lot of money. If combined support is given, the support will, the cost of the public uh, support will decrease with 4,200 euro per person per year. Many of these young people might not be fully productive ever, since we are here talking about young people with a multiple, uh, with multiple problematics. They might might not go to ina from inactive to 100% productive on the labor market. They might go to uh, costing a lot of money uh, to costing less money uh, and being more self-sufficient. But uh, it pays off to support them um, further into the road to self-sufficiency. When we calculated uh, of 596 participants in 28 projects, the profit or cost reduction was 2.5 million euros. But the biggest profit of all are their higher life quality and better health. All this considered, it is surprising that not all work uh, with this target group is of a cross-sectoral nature. Implementation is difficult, and therefore the lesson learned by ESF projects must be taken care of, and we hope, as a theme group, to contribute to that. And if you want to read more about the results and the analysis and the statistics into details, uh, they can be downloaded on our uh, website temaunga.se uh, and uh, you can find, uh, you can of course talk to us about it also if you want to know more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, when you talk about all these projects, it's clear that it's the combination that gives you a good result. But I mean, that must be difficult for a politician to explain in these times of crisis. But I mean, it's kind of difficult to, to understand the, yeah, the combination that you just explained. How, how would you go about doing that? Um, uh, we, um, usually, um, The, the structure is built on, in Sweden also on uh, sectors mm -hmm. and as a politician you usually work with one sector mainly. Uh, perhaps we need to think cross-sectorally uh, more generally uh, and have a holistic perspective uh, because uh, what we talk about here is taxpayers' money <laughs> and they are used in a lot of sectors and a lot of good work is done. Uh, but for this target group, there needs to be uh, another kind of system. Uh, it will save lives, I suspect, and uh, uh, absolutely money. Okay. Um, I suppose some people in the audience come from different European countries and might want to take this knowledge back home. But it's, uh, defining this group is kind of tricky. Is there a common European definition? There is a common European definition uh, and
and it is public, uh, publicized by the Eurostat. Uh, but but it is, it's based on surveys, the labor force survey. Uh, and uh, it doesn't... Uh, uh, the, the, our model is based on the, uh, the registry for the population. Uh, so it's more... Uh, it covers a lot of more ground mm -hmm. than the survey, which is a, a sample survey and then aggregated up to a national level, so to speak. So what you can do with this model is that you can, uh, you can uh, take from it uh, how the situation are in a specific region or in a municipality. It, it's possible to, uh, to look at all levels. And that has been what we have been lacking in Sweden. Uh, a lot of municipalities on a local level, they know these young people. <laughs> and they might even have uh, good, take good care of them. But we cannot really see this work on a national level. This is what we hope to, uh, to, to make this model general uh, in Sweden. It will make it a better work. But other countries have different kind of solutions. Uh, I think that uh, the UKs are the ones that have come furthest in Europe. Yeah, because this model is based on getting information that is in public registries. Mm. And see, in Belgium you have the employment services that are private, mm. where you couldn't get that information. Well, uh, there are examples from uh, uh, Holland and uh, even the UK, but they have joint systems. So although uh, you work in the private sector, you still ha are within the same data system as the public sector. So this can be solved if we want to solve it. Thank you, Susan. We, uh, you will come back uh, later to, when we sum up the, uh, the final panel. Uh, later this uh, afternoon, and I uh, will welcome Peter Rulin from uh, SWEPS Youth Workshop, Finland. And uh, Susan, maybe you can take the microphone, yes. And you will tell us about uh, your experience from, uh, from different projects in the youth workshop in Finland. Yes, yes, I will. Thank you all, all the friends of uh, cross sectoral cooperation in the European Union. So. I will tell you about what we have done in Finland and, and about the maybe three, four big, big things. And the, then I mean youth workshop, the outreach youth work, the change of the youth law and the youth guarantee that is coming. I try to be quite quick, so. Or we also could, could say it in other words that how to prevent the risk of marginalization and, and improve the transition states and so on. Here is the, the main points, the, the social empowerment. Uh, and then, then it's the, the youth workshop, I will tell a little bit more about them, them, then about the outreach, youth work, and then the, the change in the, in the youth law. And then there was three, three, three main proposals. This, cross-sectoral cooperation and, and outreach youth work and the, the information to, to the outreach youth work. Uh, uh, because in, in Finland the, uh, the personal law is quite strong. So we have been discussing many years about the, that who can give the information and who can, who can take it and things like that. Now we, now we change the, the youth law. And in fact it was a signal for different sectors. And it, it's really okay to help the young people to give the information. We have had examples like uh, like the youth youth advisor studio later in the school. She or he has been afraid to give the information further to the to the secondary degree education, even if, if they know that this young person will have the problems and challenges. But we have also made quite many different uh, developing things. In, yeah, yes. Can I ask what the uh, outreach is for means? Please use the microphone. Oh. Can you repeat the question? Yes, also? you, you asked about the outreach you at work. Yeah. It's meaning that it's some, someone is, I will explain it later, but if someone is going to catch in, in way or the other the young people who is outside the, the outside the education or employment and things like that. And this is the, the objective or legislative change. I, I call it this, like I said, the signal. And, and this is, for example, the outreach, youth work, that improves
improving the young people's access to, access to the public services. And to give them the, the support. Uh, before I come to the point, this is only a few definitions about the, the workshops in Finland. This is from the Labour Administration. And they are quite difficult and things like that. But the main points here are that the goal for the workshop is, is that you, do, you find for the young people education, work, and because this is from the Ministry of, of Employment and the Economy, it's also the entrepreneur. I have to say, many of the young people that we find in our workshops, with the help of the outreach youth work, the first thing for them to do, it, it, it is not the entrepreneur or something. Uh, for many of them it's, it's rehabilitation. But even if it's rehabilitation, it's much more cheaper than, for example, we have last year 1,145 young people under age of 30 that get early pension. And it costs a lot during the, the next 34 years. And one of the uh, challenges or even problems is like that you should uh, develop some kind of, of, of low level <coughs> training system also in, in Finland to be better. Nowadays, the Finnish system is like, when you come to a workshop, uh, you can be there three or four months, and then you could be in condition to go further. For many of the youngsters, the situation is not that good. They need, need a longer, longer support. And the problem is that if you push them out from the workshop, after two years, they have diagnosis, and, they need, and it has gone further. That's one, one big point that we discuss nowadays in Finland. Uh, this is another definition about the, about the workshops in, in Finland. This is from the Ministry of Education and Culture. This is also the Ministry of Education and Culture and the youth department that gives the, the uh, common guidelines in, in, in the workshop in Finland. But uh, you don't have to remember this, but Something why, why I usually show this is that my, my workshop has been quite uh, doing quite good work in Finland. It's, it's because of we, we are we are uh, placing ourselves between the social sector, the education sector, and the labor market. That has, in my point of view, that has been one one of the main things. We have been for quite many years now doing this this in Finland, and it has gone gone better and better. Uh, here are some numbers. Uh, there is about 1,600 1, uh, trainers, we call them trainers, in, in, in workshops in Finland. And the people who use workshop training has increased, in, increased every year. I don't, I don't have the exact last data, it should be ready in, in, in this, this autumn, but year 2010 it's over, over 20,000. And the, the Labour Administration, Arbeits for Mailing, and it's the biggest, biggest sending out authority now. And then the workshops in Finland, they increase their cooperation with education. This is my, my own points that I usually mention. One of the facts by, by the we make successes that we get more money from the government. It's not very much. If I count the outreach youth work and the workshops together, it's something like 20, 22 million, depending on if we get the extra budget now or not. Actually, we have quite good or interesting situation in Finland. All the political parties, they are, they are <coughs> fighting about many things, but this is something they are quite common that they, maybe they fight about who, who, who wants to give more money to us. Well, actually, the, one, one point is also that we have developed it, this documentation. Uh, maybe also, when, when you ask about the outreach youth work, they have been, been done outreach youth work also in Finland and in Sweden and in the United Kingdom earlier. Uh, and it's, it's very okay to go to the streets in, in Stockholm or in Brussels or in Helsinki. But one of the challenges is that if the young people don't know you, why should they tell you anything about, the, about your personal life? Of course it's good if, if someone is really ill outside, but that, that's why we need, need this, that we, 
we find the youngsters and we, together we go to the, to, the, to the different sectors and find the help. Also, we have the common guidelines from the cooperation with the, with the education system and the, the low level, we call them start works there, start, start workshop. So we have, we have, there's about 200 workshops in Finland, 210 nowadays, so we are, we are quite, we think quite the same about some things. And this, the last one is only, only my mention that uh, when we started uh, the National Workshop Association, 97, it was maybe 20 people or something. Last, last spring in Varsavi, it was over 600 people to, to develop this thing. Uh, here is the <coughs> workshops in Finland from last year. Uh, workshops in 264 municipalities, cities in Finland. And the, the more dark or the blue color is the more unemployment it is. It's the north and east of part of Finland. But the red point, there is no workshop, but on the other city, cities it is. And here is about the, the outreach youth work. It started actually in uh, 2008. And this year it's 340 persons it, it is, is working with the outreach youth work. Or, or they, they get the, 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 the Ministry of Education and Culture and the Youth Department will finance them. 340, I mean 279 municipalities. And here is the, what is meaning by the contact and what is meaning by the reach. Uh, actually, the Finnish Ministry of Environment and <coughs> Yeah, media ministry, we say environment, the Ministry of Environment, yes. Right. Uh, they, they did a research about this and, and it will help us that it, it's, it's important to, to do the traditional outreach street for, but <coughs> more successful is this cross-sectoral cross cooperation. <coughs> that in, in, in some way you find the young people and bring him or her to the, to the unemployment office, to the social bureau, to the school and things like that. Here is just yellow shows how the very Finland it is outreach you but this is from the year 2011 and this is this year 2012 and the goal is that there is not going to be any, any white areas in Finland. <coughs> uh, this is the uh, data about, about how many people get, get training in Finland and the the blue line is the youngsters under 25. There is a difference between Finland. You, you are, you are in, the, in part of the, the youth law until you feel 29, but in the unemployment office you are young till 25. So that's why it's different data. Uh, here is always one, one PowerPoint I want to show. Uh, because when the, the press on started in, in Finland, uh, or in the European Union 2008. Uh, we had these people in the workshops. And now we have quite many more. And it has gone down, it has something about 30,000 now. But uh, last year the Ministry of Finance seems that now, now the unemployment goes down in Finland. Maybe we can cut off the, we don't pay so much the workshop and the outreach. So. But then we would have done the same mistake than we did in Finland when it was low depression in 1994. We forget those people who don't can't reach the open work market by their own. Okay. How, how much? Thirty seconds. Then. One. <laughs> okay. I just just show. This is one one thing because <laughs> for us adults it's quite easy to orient in the. In the education system, but for young people. In fact, this is a real, 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 real education system for Finland. <laughs> uh, I show... We also have a Swedish-speaking network, those of you who speak Swedish, 
ULA, som fick ungdomlärande arbete i Sumant och checka ut mer av de youth workshops och outreach. Det translates till Swedish quite much. And then about the youth guarantee, the Ministry of en, en, Ministry have opened their own home pages in English. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Sigrid. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so you mentioned there was about 20,000 people in workshops right now. Uh, what do they actually do in these workshops? Uh, different kind of things. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the STARS workshop. They train off, off, off in the social skills. Then we could also have this uh, work training. Then you can do something practical things. Because we, we have noticed in Finland that we, even if we have a quite good education system, and, and quite nice PISA results. I'm not a support of them, but uh, some of the people learn better doing practical things. So practical things. Okay. So CV writing also? Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and the new thing that we are, we are going to, to do in Finland is that we are discussing about it's all, also in, the, in, in our government's uh, uh, program, to, to government program, uh, that you should develop a different kind of flexible uh, education environment and then, then the workshop part thinking how could we cope we find the answers how could we cooperate with the local <coughs> school and the, and the entrepreneurs that develop something yeah do, do you have any figure of how many people actually get a job after passing through these workshops uh, national in Finland the statistics shows that work or education or other solution is about 75 percent of them mm -hmm. so quite good percent okay great thank you in steps we are 90. <laughs> thank you Peter. maybe we'll give you another one but i know we have to speak uh, early and then i will, uh, would like to welcome uh, our uh, visitor from german uh, speaking from the the Federal Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, Sabina Slinke, and you will talk to us about, uh, which is not a project, it's a program, it's immense figures, you have an immense budget. <laughs> and, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to present IDA, our IDA program. And hello, everybody. Yes, mobility for all. That was the reason for the ministry to establish a leader program. Mobility not only for university students, trainees, or young, able, skilled workers, but also for disadvantaged, unemployed, and less employable target groups. And uh, the objective of EDA is to improve the chances of disadvantaged people on the labor market through work stays, through internships in other European countries. And uh, there were a first call, a call for disadvantaged youth in 2008. The uh, project started to work in 2009 and it's still going on. And we also had a second call in 2010 for disabled people. Here you see some uh, data of the budget and the EDA program is a part of the operational program, of the ESF program, of the Priority XE. And uh, for the first call, EDA 1, 69 project networks are receiving assistance. For EDA 2, for disabled people, there are 45 project networks. And the limit for each project for funding is 2 million euro. Here you see the conditions for funding. All projects work or operate as networks. Perhaps you know uh, EQUAL, the former EQUAL uh, community initiative, the so called developing partnerships. It's more or less the same here. To, uh, get or together all the knowledge which uh, is needed. We, uh, it's not only one project, but different project partners who are working together. And to include the job centers or the employment agencies, that's mandatory. And the reason is to reach 
the unemployed because they often get uh, assistance or money from the job centers and so that's the best way to reach them. And, but it's also to ensure that the project work is orientated on the needs of the labor market. And yes, they sign cooperation agreements and they have to have a, at least one transnational partner. And of course, the implementation of gender equality, the dual gender equality strategy is also mandatory. And uh, to, to support that, um, the ministry tendered and established the agency for gender equality within ESF for this funding period. Of course, we saw it's uh, even if projects want to um, apply gender equality strategies, it's not so easy to reach the aim because often because of a lack of knowledge. And uh, so the agency agency is counseling leader program management and give input and support to network meetings of either project networks. And for the second call, they developed a gender equality, a gender equality requirement. And now I will concentrate on the first call and either, either one for disadvantaged youth and young adults. And that are young people between school and training, also early school leavers, young adults between training or studies and uh, occupation. And uh, we have a special target group that are young single parents. And in Germany, it's a big group, often, often women, far away from the labor market, often without uh, vocational training or the idea of uh, um, networking could be also possible for single parents. And uh, there we also work very closely together with job centers and uh, leader projects who are working with this target group, of course, finance, um, child care, and organize and finance uh, child care. <coughs> and here you see the project operators, and it's yeah, a big about amount of job centers and uh, or employment agencies. Also, municipalities are often that uh, the, it's the meaning of uh, job centers from the municipality. <coughs> and here you see. The transnational partners, as I said, every project has to have project network has to have at least one transnational partner. Say okay. Thank you. And uh, here are some data about the participants. The average age is slightly over 23 years. And many of them have, has a, have a significant experience of unemployment, as you see, often more than one year. And frequently <coughs> vocational training or education is lacking. Our aim is uh, to reach 60% women because of the data of the labor statistics, so we still have to work on it. And uh, until now, we reached uh, about 5,000 participants. So what are the success factors and how is EDA working? First of all, we have to, or the project networks, have to convince the target group to dare it to go abroad, to dare it to, to, to make new steps in new directions. So there we work together, or the projects work together with the labor um, offices or the job centers and uh, with individual consultation and profiling assessments. <coughs> and when they are convinced, <laughs> or nearly convinced, <laughs> the preparation is starting. It's also a very important phase, uh, which lasts one, up to three months. And during that preparation, they, it's uh, occup occupational guidance and training, but also an intercultural training 
and the la and, uh, language courses um, because they will or should go abroad and then it's necessary to have a uh, knowledge of the foreign language but it's not uh, language that are not language courses like at school but it's more an applied language call, uh, course to, to learn how to survive in another country and um, often it's yeah a lot of them for them it's often the first time they go abroad so they also have to learn things like how to to, to buy a train ticket or a flight ticket, how is everything uh, working at the airport? So it's also an exciting experience. So and then they are going abroad and we don't uh, let them go alone, but they were accompanied and counseled during that stay abroad. And the stay is, uh, will uh, last uh, from one month to up to six months. And uh, one month is nearly too short, but the, uh, the average is uh, three months. And they are doing uh, internships in different uh, branches or different uh, uh, enterprises. It could be childcare or tourism of, uh, offices, hotels, mechanical, mechanical um, workshops, and so on. It depends on the uh, qualification or the interest of the youth. Uh, the, that's part of the profiling and the transnational partner who is uh, responsible for the placement. Like, yeah, Peter is also one of these transnational partners of an EDA project. They are looking for the internships where um, the workers there are convinced uh, that it's good to, to uh, receive uh, youngsters from Germany and where the, which uh, will suit, yes. And they, the groups are accompanied by social workers who reflect on experiences gained and uh, support in cases of conflicts during the traineeship. And uh, when they are coming back after three, four or five months, it's, they are often very motivated and therefore it's yeah, necessary to keep that motivation to work with them when they are coming back and to help them to be, uh, reflect the experiences and uh, prepare uh, or do preparations for job placement or training or for the further qualifications and that also in close cooperation with the job centers. And, uh, and uh, the results Yes, <coughs> um, the results of these uh, success factors or of these uh, work and uh, will or are already published in German as a handbook how to conduct transnational mobility measures for disadvantaged uh, target groups. You'll find some uh, German versions on the table there and it soon it will be translated in English and you can find it then on, on our website. In Spanish it's already translated because the Spaniards are very interested in uh, this program. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention something. Um, it's a trans transnational program and uh, the transnational program means uh, that it's an exchange. It's not only Germans or people from Germany being sent to foreign countries but also um, Finland or <coughs> France or Spain could, but it's foreseen that they also send youngsters to Germany for an internship. But the problem is, it parts of it has to be financed by the foreign or the partner country. And if there is not a similar ESF program or project uh, uh, for transnational mobility, then uh, it's difficult to get the money. And uh, therefore, we are yes, we we are preparing or we applied uh, for, uh, for a call at the commission um, to prepare a, a coordinated call for the next funding period. That means that there in a, uh, in different European countries at the same time, either projects 
uh, which could be then work together and send Germans, people from Germany to other countries and people from these countries to Germany. So we hopefully will uh, get uh, <coughs> that uh, network financed. <laughs> and yes, now the first, there was a, um, or oh, no, the monitoring system of the Commission doesn't ask uh, the questions what will be happen with participants after the stay abroad. <coughs> but we wanted to know what happens with the participants after EDA. And so project operators, job centers, and the federal ministry de developed a questionnaire to find out more. And 56 EDA projects uh, national, national, nationwide took part in the survey till October 2011, and uh, more than 1,000 questionnaires had been evaluated. And uh, there you see that the integration rate after six weeks is already quite high. 31% um, are in social insured employment, or in training, or going to university again, or at school again. UNE is a public finance job, some have mini jobs, that's not our aim, but for some it's the uh, first uh, step to enter the labor market. And 25% are still in the so called integration process or unemployed. And already six months later, it's, uh, the integration rate is even higher. So we think we are on the right way with uh, this program. And, uh, there was also a survey as part of the overall evaluation of the federal operational program and uh, of the participants, uh, which was conducted before and after the stay abroad. And <clears throat> the main results after the stay abroad were that participants have a significantly more optimistic view, both on their general future prospects and their occupational opportunities and they are much more motivated to actively meet the challenges of their occupational and their private future. So, oh, yes, I can, perhaps uh, if you are interested in the data of the midterm review, uh, some books, booklets are on the table and you can find this <coughs> in English on our website and on the website is also uh, either EU map where you can find all the projects and social partners. Also the email of Peter <laughs> as you find out. So thank you very much. Thanks everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was really fascinating hearing a German presentation while knowing that there are tens of thousands of young Spaniards going to Germany to find jobs and then hearing that Germans train to go abroad to find jobs there. Uh, but so you, you said that uh, there were like 30 or 40 percent to actually get a job afterwards. Uh, is, do you have any figures on the mobility? Like uh, how many of these young people actually, I don't know, go abroad and live abroad afterwards? Mm, I don't have uh, data, but most of them uh, stay in Germany mm. to yes, continue with school or to start an apprenticeship or to work, but some also got uh, uh, job offers in in France or in Sweden or mm -hmm. and some stayed there. But uh, also if they didn't stay, it was for all of them, it was a good feeling that someone wanted to have them, that they are needed, so they even were offered a job in another country. Mm -hmm. Because in Germany they all, all the, um, often counted as users. Who, yeah. They are put into boxes and no one would let them out of these boxes. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose it looks good on the CV afterwards that you were doing an internship in a different country. I mean, yeah, I but I think the most important point is uh, the self confidence and self esteem they want with this experience. If I, if they, it's something like to, uh, to survive in Sweden in a, in a foreign language, then I also can survive in Germany. That's, that's the idea. It's not, the idea is not to, to send them abroad uh, for, for working, but to use that mobility measure to uh, improve the workability and employability. That means self-esteem and uh, 
you mentioned that uh, these kind of networks work in some countries and not other countries, depending on if there is already a structure there or not. Uh, have the fact that, I mean, have you seen a change in these years? Are there more of these networks in different countries? And uh, um, how, how far are we? You, you mentioned uh, Spain, and uh, the unemployment rate in Spain is uh, much more higher than in Germany. And so we uh, <coughs> negotiated with them, we had uh, meetings, and the uh, um, regional um, <coughs> government of Galicia, they uh, collected or gave money for young uh, Spaniards from Galicia to come for these train uh, ships to Germany. <coughs> and uh, there will be also one uh, uh, pilot group from Austria and uh, some other uh, project networks are using um, Leonardo money or um, from the, yeah, I'm looking for other money, but it's not, uh, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But uh, that we are planning to change this for the next uh, funding period. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we will move over to Sabina. You will be stay here for a little while also after, so we can catch up with you. And even uh, if there are any bilateral questions, you can meet up with Sabina afterwards. And now we say welcome to. Uh, we will move over to a very interesting project about film. Filmmaking and it's uh, Shaker Keitaro and uh, Niklas Bailun who uh, you are from Gothenburg and you will uh, tell us about your experience from uh, an award-winning film you have made and uh, also you have received some uh, global attention, worldwide attention for for your work. Let's hear more about that. Yes, thank you. We're from an organization called Bergholz Kultur Medienwerkstatt, that is a non-profit organization located in the east of uh, Gothenburg. And we were invited here today uh, to talk some about our project, Film Workers on the Way. Uh, that was a project financed by the Swedish Heritage Fund, uh, European Social Fund, uh, Westerhotlands Region, Gothenburg City, Bergholz and Familiebostad. My name is Niklas Lundin and uh, I started out as a participant in the project uh, a few years ago. Then later on I got hired uh, as a coordinator for the project and uh, also a producer for the feature Bloody Boys that we produced uh, within the project. With me today I have my co-worker uh, who is the one that started the project in the first place. Uh, maybe you should move out a little bit, so uh, I think, yes. Yeah. My name is uh, Shaker uh, Kay Tahir, uh, and I have been uh, uh, the project manager and uh, film director. Uh, I will uh, speak uh, Swedish, <laughs> uh, and uh, in class, uh, help me with uh, the English. Att arbeta med film är helt annat än att jobba med ett annat arbete. To work with within the cultural sector and with with film, it's a lot of difference from from other professions. Att arbeta med film kräver inte bara utbildning utan det kräver merit och man har varit med ett produkt som man har utgivit. Working with culture and, and uh, with, with film, it's, it's important to addition to, to education, you also need uh, to to have a few, what to say, products, movies behind you, uh, and a qualification working with with movies. Uh, otherwise, it's it's really hard to to find uh, find jobs. Många vet vad vilka filmer som Bergman har gjort och vilka filmer som hans fotograf Sven Pistarut, men vi vet inte vad de studerat. 
I mean, many of us know um, Bad Ingmar Bergman is, and his photographer Sven Mikvist. But uh, we don't know. We know what they have done and what movies they've been working with, but we don't know uh, much about their education. Därför startade vi våra projekt för att arbeta på väg för att skapa eller skapa ett projekt för de unga filmare. That's one of the reasons uh, why we started the project Film Workers on the Way for for new uh, young unestablished film workers. Och var man nisch var för de börjar nog alltid uh, att uh, mixa professionella filmarbetare både och bakom kamera och framför kamera när eh uh, både och professionella. Uh, our organization has always worked with uh, with a mix of of both producing prof professional films and working with social aspects and in this case we worked with uh, uh, new young unestablished film workers and uh, professional film workers that were established in the in the film industry yeah we will continue to speak about uh, our uh, project Yes, I will talk a little bit more about the project. Uh, Film Workers on the Way was a project that we started in 2009 and it ended uh, a few months ago uh, this year. And uh, the aim was to bridge the gap between what we talked about, the, the unestablished young new filmmakers and established filmmakers within the industry. Um, and this we did throughout the process of making a feature film. In this way, uh, the participants uh, gain uh, new knowledge and experience in a new high level of uh, filmmaking. They get references from uh, established film workers. They get uh, qualifications working with feature film, adequate job titles, and uh, valuable networks in the industry. And, um, Worth mentioning is also there's a gap between short films and feature films. Usually you don't get a lot of uh, acknowledge uh, until you work with a feature film. So that's really important to establish yourself within the industry and uh, make a living uh, working with film. Um, to, to make a living working with film, it's, it's not easy, especially if you don't have a national way into the industry and uh, if you have a, don't have the right networks and contacts. And uh, there's a lot of young people in Sweden that study Swin uh, film at uh, different uh, levels. Uh, but they have, most of them have a hard time to find uh, a job. And most of these film workers don't get the chance to, to prove uh, and to show their abilities and capacity. Yet there is a growing, um, growing need for film talents in the region of Gothenburg. The project tried to recruit these young people who in some way wanted to work with film and have some previous, previous experience, uh, education, made some short films and so on, uh, to prove themselves and show how talented they are. Um, and uh, the project targets, targets people uh, that were unemployed or between uh, studies and work in the age between 16 to 29 years old. Uh, we recruited about a third of the participants from Bergholm, the part of Gothenburg we're from. And uh, the rest were mainly recruited from Gothenburg, but we also had a lot of people from different parts of Sweden uh, participating in the project. And in each <coughs> process of creating a feature film, from pre-production, script, post-production, uh, with editing, uh, sound, music, to marketing and distribution, the project uh, formed different groups for these departments, consisting of participants and established uh, film worker as a mentor and they worked uh, side by side 
for a few months, uh, like in an internship. Uh, and the goal was to make the participants independent, to let them grow with responsibility, um, and to work with something real, uh, where you can make a difference and feel that you matter. It uh, matters a lot when it comes to motivation. Uh, and it was a very fruitful collaboration between the new young uh, people and the established professional film workers, where the film workers contribute with their uh, skills, knowledge, uh, networks, and um, the young, new, unestablished participants. They had a lot of good uh, new energy to contribute with, as well as new perspectives on the, uh, <coughs> the process of filmmaking. Um, to get top actors in front of the camera was also uh, an important factor to maintain uh, quality, but as well to get the participants used to working with an established crew boat behind and in front of the camera. Um, another important thing worth mentioning is that we also work with continuing to support the participants after their internship was uh, finished um, in many different ways, like inviting them to meeting points with the industry, um, to give them recommendations, uh, to help them to start their own businesses, and, and such. Um, yeah, and, and we also did three different uh, behind the scenes uh, films of this uh, project, and we would like to show you uh, a part of one of them. Uh, it's about five minutes, four or five minutes, and. It's uh, a few participants getting interviewed, and uh, as well, uh, I think uh, <coughs> Steve Engström, uh, actor in Sweden, will talk some, and you will see some images of the final uh, product, the, the feature, Bloody Rose. Yes? Yes, 
ansvar. Det var väldigt roligt. Jag, när jag sökte, sökte trä så... Jag visste ju när orkestern var, men jag hade inte varit det som så. Jag hade gjort egna filmer och så. Och jag trodde att jag inte alls skulle få det ansvar som jag fick. Men det var liksom pang på. Det var jätteroligt att man kunde känna att man var en del av det. Att man inte bara stod bredvid och tittade på. Så det är det viktigaste som jag har fått ut av det här erfarenhet och hjälp. Eh, att vi kan hjälpa varandra helt enkelt. Men jag tror att det eh, var väldigt bra för dem som är den professionella har att få jobba med oss eh, så pass länge att ligga på en gång. Och se att eh, praktikanter och kanske kan anses som att eh, det är lite jobbigt att man måste ta hand om dem. Men i det här fallet så tror jag att de såg att det var nya och drivande och att det är bra med praktik både för de har fått oss att hjälpa varandra och så. Det var en, en fin tid med väldigt mycket, många varma, professionella personer. Det hade en fantastisk, en fantastisk tid. Yeah. 